so I've just uh, got set up at Waterside Farm Campsite in Edel. It must be about 30 degrees today. Um, there's a tiny patch of shade near my tent, but other than that, there's no shade at all now, so it's actually pretty unpleasant. I mean, it's nice that it's sunny, but it's just ridiculously hot. And then in a few days, I'll go back to Hathersage and camp there for three more nights. You can't really see from here, but you've got Kinder Scout up along that ridge there. And up that side, you've got Mam Tor. So I might do some evening walking when it's a little bit cooler because you're very exposed on those hills. <laughs> There's no shade. Yeah, it's amazing weather, but it's just a bit much. Well, I guess that's been British for you. We do like to moan about the weather. It's kind of universal, really. Well, universal amongst the British. The sign half covered by undergrowth there. Youth Hostel, Edale, Moreland Centre. That's all there is. So I'm just trying to head up to Mam Tor. Just going down this little track here. Uh, it's about 20 past 10. That uh, river looks very inviting. I didn't do any walking yesterday. I just sort of settled in, to be honest. It's just been too warm and I just wanted to chill out. So there shouldn't be any vehicular traffic along here though. Might be the odd farmer. I Many just bikes. You can see directly ahead up there. That's map tour I'm gonna try and get to. Yeah it's beautiful weather. So this will essentially be just a, a camping diary. It's just gonna be me walking and explaining what's going on. In a new place we haven't seen yet. Behind me there, that mountain range, and then there, to the scout. That's a really long walk if you come down Jacob's Ladder. Just found this little honesty box with some snacks and water and lemonade. That's really good. I haven't got any change, but I'm all right for now. If someone's really thirsty after a long walk, I can at least refresh and rehydrate themselves. Mam Tor was actually the first time, the first date me and my girlfriend went on actually. We went and climbed Mam Tor together, it was the first time we met in person. So that was really nice. So walking along here reminds me of that. <laughs> nice idea for a first date. And then we went to the cafe in Edel afterwards and had some tea and cakes. Could go that way. Um, there's a little bit that veers off to the left at some point, which I'm going to go along to show you a better view of the Hope Valley itself. And then if I'm feeling up to it, we will go up Mantor, but I'm already feeling the heat already and it's not even half ten yet. Well, just gone half ten. Friday the 12th of August. These little shady patches are a haven at the moment. Yeah, I think this was it. If we go up to the right here, we'll get to Mam Tor. What we're going to do is go quickly up to the left, so we can show you some views of the valley. Wow. What have we got going on tree-wise? It's Hawthorne. Hawthorne Hazel Sycamore. If you are going out during the middle of the day and it's particularly sunny, make sure you bring a hat, plenty of water and wear sunscreen. I forgot to bring any, stupidly, so I'm doing this at my own risk. Please wear sunscreen if you are going to be out in the sun for prolonged, prolonged hours. So one time me and my girlfriend were walking up along here, uh, not sure what time of year ago it was. I think it was last summer, last June or July. And all of a sudden, a man started running down from at the top of the hill. And there was a bit of thunder and lightning. And then a downpour the likes of which I'd never seen before. 
suddenly occurred. So we got caught in that, absolutely drenched. This was all flowing with water, running all the way down. It was an insane amount of rainfall in a very short time. So we went to the Ramblers Inn to kind of dry out for a bit afterwards. But there was a window on the tent that we'd forgotten to close. And there you go, it's a nice bit of view there. Perhaps can be zoomed in a little bit. We forgot to close the window on the tent and we left all our clothes lying out in the front porch. So when we got back, there was a pool of water in the front porch of the tent. And all our dry clothes that we'd been waiting to change into were completely drenched, so... <laughs> That wasn't very good. We couldn't use the tumble dryers either because it was around the time with COVID restrictions. So anyway, it's a fun memory looking back on it. But that downpour was just insane. Oh, you can ruin here. It's the time of year when we get in the berries. These haven't quite gone that deep red yet, but they're getting there. That really loamy smell you get sometimes in the peaks. It just smells of soil and earth and moss and it's really quite a pungent smell sometimes. What have you got here? Got a funny looking beach. <laughs> Let's just get up the top of here and I'll show you what the other Hope Valley and then we'll try and go up the Mamator in earnest. Yeah, it was just up here that a man suddenly came running down and then lightning and we thought <laughs> it was going to be lightning. It's not best to be up on top of the hill, is it? <coughs> up on top of a mountain during a lightning storm. It's probably not wise. Right. We won't go all the way along here. I'll just show you a little bit. Nothing but the sound of sheep bleating. Right. Let's go and do Mam Tour. I'll see you on the route up there. Look at this stream bed, it's completely bone dry. Wow. <laughs> so against my better judgment, I'm about to try and get a mam tour. Blistering sun. If I don't make it, no, it'll be fine. Domicile. This is my private domicile. Still got a little bit of shade I see up this path. It was November when we went on that date a good few years ago now. So the weather was very different. But this couldn't be more picturesque. I would recommend if you are going to do this, go really early in the morning, particularly on a hot sunny day because it won't be as hot, but also there won't be as many folk around, so you only up as early as you can. It would be nice to catch the sunrise from up there, wouldn't it? Ooh. Okay, we're entering no shade territory now. Be very careful. There's a couple of people up there already. I'll just walk quite slowly. Oh, that is fierce. It's similar to when uh, I filmed that Borth Avaris with Coastal Walk, actually. It was just so warm. Ah, every now and then there's a nice, playful, cool breeze. Ah, thank 
cute nature the cause of and solution to life's problems ah well this is the thing i've forgotten actually the wind might increase as we climb higher i remember that was one good thing about stanage edge when you get on top you actually get quite cool so there it gives me an incentive to, an incentive to get up there still planning to release a little tree file series where I'm going to go through all the different trees starting with oak just go into them in a bit more detail reiterate how to identify them different kinds of oak you've got cecil, pedunculate, home oak, turkey oak and red oak aptly named because the leaves go a really nice red colour in autumn. It's often planted in parks. I know there's a few outside Sheffield Station actually. Our friend Ash there. You know, without zooming in, you can't see a great deal actually in the distance with this camera. Right, I'll get a bit higher up and I'll give you an update. Whew. Yeah, this was not a good idea. But I feel like I'm most of the way there, I might as well just carry on. Hopefully the nice breeze on top of here. But yeah, this is really, really hard going. A bit, bit foolish really, without any sunscreen. I can't reiterate, reiterate enough how silly that is, but hopefully this will be a lesson. <sighs> right, just up through here, up along there, sort of where my finger is around that corner, the stairs going up and along. So that's what we're aiming for. I'll see you when we're up there. Just get up these steps all the way up there, and then I'll show you the view. Goodness, there's a breeze up here. Oh, that's a, saved my life. Because that was horrible. <laughs> Particularly that stretch earlier with no shade. It's not actually that long a walk to get up the mountain tour. Kinder Scout is much more challenging. Whew. Castleton down there. Well, we're nearly at the top, almost there. You can see the, what do you call it, stone just at the top there. <laughs> Find out what it is and put it in the text in the video because I've forgotten the name of them. Fantastic scenery, eh? I might not be able to film too much at the top because there might be quite a few people about, but I'll get you some views anyway.
trail down, sort of down there. You can follow it round. I don't know if you can get back down to Edo all that way. If you can get back down into Castleton, I don't know where we're going there today. There's some paragliders over there, I don't know if you can see. Anyway, I've only got so much battery left. I'm going to go back down, cook some food, drink plenty of water. I'm just making my way back down now. <clears throat> Without the breeze from being up there, it's, uh, it's like hitting a wall of heat. But I'm on the way back. I'm descending. Small shade further down. Oh, yeah, that was quite a mission, actually, to get up there. I'm glad I stuck with it, though. <laughs> so if you do want to camp in Edel, you've got three options. Um, if it's going to be a busy weekend in summer, I'd recommend you try and book advance, in advance because everywhere will be fully booked over the weekends. Weekdays, if you have time off, is probably the best. Not as busy. Um, <clears throat> you've got Newfold Farm campsite, you've got the Fieldhead campsite, and you've got the Waterside Farm campsite. So you've got three to choose from. I've stayed at all three and stayed all fine, really. You've got a little uh, shop by the Newfold Farm campsite, the cafe, and there's two pubs in Edel. You've got, I think it's the Ramblers Inn and the Nags Head. Um, in terms of a shop, there is only that little one attached to Newfold Farm. Um, it's good if you're in a pinch, you need something quickly, but if you're thinking of buying lots of food to cook while you're camping, I'd recommend either you bring it with you or probably best somewhere like Hathersedge which has got a few more you know well stocked shops so but Edel a great place to come for a, a day excursion if you want to go up Mam Tor um, if you're into hiking and you're walking you could quite easily do Mam Tor and probably Kinder Scout in one day if you started early enough a Kinder Scout walk the one that we usually do is quite a bit longer than Mam Tor Mam Tor is not so bad really it really doesn't take long to get up there Kinder, Stout, uh, Kinder Scout is a bit more of a mission. If you're going all the way along the top, you can come down Jacob's Ladder. I think I'd rather do that way than <laughs> the opposite to go up Jacob's Ladder, to be honest. But, um, oh, gate was a bit funny. Oh, we actually got lost one time went up over Kinder and came down you see basically the, well, the other side of this mountain range and once you're on the other side of it the only way to come back over it is to double back on yourself or walk all the way to Bamford so we <laughs> ended up doing that one time in the dark on the main road uh, it took flipping ages and then we got the train back from Bamford but all because we got on the wrong side of this mountain range and there really was no other way over I mean, we should have doubled back on ourselves, but by that point we were that far across that... Well, you know, it probably would have been quicker going back the way we came in hindsight. It was fun, it was a little adventure, but I haven't walked that long for a, a while. <laughs> we were saying, oh, it'll be fine, we'll get back before dark, and then suddenly it's dark and you're walking along a main road, and you know that it's another good few hours till you're going get, to get back, but... So my battery's nearly died. Uh, it drains super quickly. Um, definitely I'm going to need to invest in more batteries and a battery charger rather than charging with it connected to the GoPro. That might be a bit better, but you always charge with, your, with the mains if you can. Doing it by USB just isn't as good. Yeah, I really like going camping and going hiking and going on walks and I enjoy filming it. You know, they're not the highest quality films ever, but I've always sort of thought as long as I'm getting enjoyment from doing these videos, that's the main thing. But it is hard not to take it personally if you feel you've worked really hard on something and it doesn't, uh, doesn't do very well. But when you look at all the other videos out there, you really need to be doing something special. Or, you know, it's... It's just not that interesting to some people. The bloke walking along talking a bit. <laughs> There's some lovely videos out there too. I can't remember any other YouTuber names at the moment, but 
particularly um, the use of drone footage. You get some stunning shots with that. Some really amazing shots if you've got a drone. If money were no object, I'd be on that straight away. But yeah, beautiful shots you can get with one of those. One of those bad boys. But I'll make do with my GoPro for the moment. I think the thing is, Well, that's it from this episode of the Camping Diary. We've done MAM Tour. But thank you a lot for watching. Uh, it means a lot if you've got this far. Um, if you have any suggestions or anything, just let me know in the comments because it really is good to get that feedback. I think some feedback I've gotten thus far seems to be, well, what's the main focus of the channel? Is it just camping diaries? Is it tree identification? Like, what's the... <laughs> what's the USP? Because there's a bit of a mix of things at the moment. But um, I guess I'm just trying to find out what works well and what I like and what I'm good at. So, yeah, just keeping it as a hobby is the best thing for me at the moment. I do think eventually I can create something really good. Like particularly with these trick focus videos, if they're very informative, give you lots of information. And, you know, as my editing skills improve. Um, Sometimes it's just, you can't force it. I've had this tree idea, this tree focus idea in my head for a while now and I started planning it, but I've just had a bit of spare bit of time and thought, well, let's have a look, let's see what I can do. But it just wasn't coming and you just can't force that creativity. Go and do something else, go and get some inspiration or what have you. You know, just because you can do something and have the time to do it doesn't mean you necessarily should or that you can force it to work well. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Alright, goodbye.